once again, you guys have absolutely been killing it with the VFX advertising tutorials inside of Blender, so I thought we'd get a little bit more involved today and do a whole workflow instead of just everything inside of Blender. Like always, if you want to work along with us, you can download everything I use down below. Okay, so the first thing is we need to launch FSpy. You can download that below, and then we need to drag our image into FSpy. Now, I'm going to assume you've already used FSpy, but let's go ahead and dim image off, and I want to go ahead and set up my uh, orientation of the scene. So I'm just going to select this X axis right here, place that there, and then we'll just kind of place that a little bit down here on that line. And then for the Y axis, we can just go ahead and place that on the side of our building right here. It's actually a pretty nice scene to rotate our scene. So I'm just going to place it up here. You want to try to make these as perpendicular as possible. So this gives us a really good result. Let's just make sure it's kind of lining up. So I'm going to place that there and let's try turning on the 3D guide. We'll do the xz floor and you can see that's roughly following my scene what i do notice is that we're a little bit off and so i want to try to fix that as much as possible so i'm going to rotate like that and i'm basically just trying to line up this line as you can see there i'm just going to rotate it like that and then that should uh do a little bit better so i'm just using that again just that line to kind of rotate the edge of my screen and then we can go ahead and set xy grid 4 on I'm just going to place the origin right here uh, so we can actually have the origin point inside Blender. Control S to save, and we're going to save the project. Okay, so once you've saved the project, let's go ahead, exit out of FSpy, and launch up Blender. And then what we can go ahead and do is I want to go ahead and A, select and delete everything. Then if we go to File, or sorry, let's go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons. And then you just want to install the FSpy importer add-on and make sure to install the zip file with that. And then just check mark that, and now it's uh, imported into our scene. Let's go ahead and File import fspy and then locate the file we just saved so once you click that let's import that in and now we have our scene set up let's go ahead shift a add a mesh plane i'm going to rotate that on the x-axis 90 degrees so g uh, or sorry r x 90 and then now that we have that we can go ahead and set up this object and what we do want to keep is we do uh notice that it's on our kind of x-axis right here we don't want to change that at all we don't want it to kind of you know go deviate off that x-axis because this is actually a flat plane of our building here so what we can do is i want to go hit tab to go into edit mode one to go into verse tech select let's actually just grab this edge so uh, go to edge select g z i'm going to move that up and then we can g X, move that to the side and now is where I can uh, hit Z go into wireframe I'm basically just trying to line up the side of our building where the actual ad is going to be so I'm going to G X move that over here and we also need to line up the bottom so what I'm actually going to do is G Z just move that up so I know exactly kind of where that is and then we'll move it down in a little bit and then I kind of want to follow the edge of the building here so it goes all the way down to around like right here I'm just trying to use it like this kind of line as a reference because the building actually does kind of curve up here so it's not a perfect rectangle so what i actually might do is like this i'll just drag that down so gz move that down to the rectangle part of our building then let's go back into vertex select by hitting one gx move that over gz and then move both of these down and now we actually have where our ad is going to be. And so let's go back to solid view. We need to go ahead and define uh, the area outside of that. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back into edit mode. So hit tab. We're going to hit three to select this face right here. Then we're going to E extrude that out. And then we can hit S to scale. And that'll basically just scale it out. Let's hit X and then delete the faces to delete the extra face that we don't really need. And now what we can do is select this face. And I'm going to E extrude that inwards. So now we kind of have uh, this effect going on, and this is actually where I'm going to want uh, all of the ad space to be. So let's go ahead and set up some materials in our scene. I'm going to come over to the render properties, go down to cycles, and then GPU compute. Let's go ahead and denoise the viewport, but not the render. And I'm going to set the render samples down to a 128 for now, just so if we need to test render anything, it's going to be super fast. And then the viewport samples we can do down to a 64, just so it's a little bit faster in our viewport. Um, so now with all that set up, let's go to the render view, and we don't see anything in our scene because uh, we don't have any lighting or anything set up. So let's first of all, let's do the uh, material. So I'm going to select this object and then go to the material properties, add a new material, and we're going to name this one room because whatever the first material that you add onto the object is going to be uh, the material for the entire object. And so now, of course, I want this outside to not be seen by our camera, so I'm going to make a new material. And this one I'm going to name holdout. 
and what we can do is now you can see that if we go into edit mode all of our faces are still that room texture so what we need to do let's select all four of these faces out here and we can select them to be our holdout texture and we want to assign that texture and now if we select these faces they'll read as the holdout material and the faces inside are going to read as our room material okay so let's select the holdout material and of course we want to change it from principal bstf to holdout right here and then now everything outside of here isn't rendering if i click out of here you'll notice some lines on the side and that's actually because we don't have transparency in our scene so in order to enable that let's go to the render properties go down to film and i'm going to change transparent to be on and that's remove the outside edges okay so now that we have the material sorted out let's go ahead and add a hri into our scene so i'm going to come over to the world properties go to uh, the surface up here we're going to change the color into an environment texture and then open up the hri i have linked down below so once you have that, let's open the image, and now we have some shading in our scene. And so for this, I'm going to be using a model uh, that you I downloaded from Polyhaven. So you just want to go ahead and download that model. It will come with a textures folder and then a blend file. So let's go ahead and append uh, some of the wine uh, models in. So I'm going to come over here to File. We're going to go to Append, and Append is basically just importing through a blend file. And so let's locate wherever we saved our asset. So mine is right here. We can double click inside of this blend file. And then we just want to go to object and we can just select all these by hitting A and append those into our scene. And so now it has uh, appended it into our scene. Let's go ahead and Z go up to rendered. And you'll see that the textures and everything uh, kept, uh, you know, applied uh, and that's actually because we had the textures folder in the same folder that i put my blend file and so if for any reason you're having like pink textures or anything like that you just want to come up here to file external data and then you can find missing files right there and then you just want to locate that textures folder and click inside of the textures folder and you know just find those missing files and click this button and it should automatically apply them if not then you'll have to do some tinkering there but uh, now that we're left with this let's actually play around a little bit um, so let's scale these all up and depending on which one that you want in your scene you can of course select a different one than me but I really like the way that this bottle looks so let's go ahead I'm just going to bring these guys out here and hit M to add a new collection we're going to do wine bottles like that and then we have this collection saved over here so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, uncheck mark that so it's not rendered in our scene and then let's just select this G X move this over here. And for this ad, I want it to basically take up a majority of the ad. We can also, uh, I want it to tilt a little bit. So R Y just like that. Uh, it gives like a nice little effect right, right there. Let's R double tap Z and kind of move it around. I kind of want it to be facing more towards the camera like that. So there we go. And so now we, pretty much have uh, it set up in our scene. I do kind of want to add a cool little background. Uh, I don't want it to just be a kind of white room in there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around and I want it to basically try to be like an ocean of wine in the background. Uh, so I think that will be a pretty cool effect. So let's go ahead and I want to shift a add a mesh plane. And then what we can do is let's hold uh, shift H to uh, hide everything else besides the object that we had selected. And so now what I want to do is I want to make this kind of a ripply kind of ocean effect. And so a great way to do that is using the ocean modifier. So let's go to the modifiers tab, add modifier, and let's go to ocean. And that's created this uh, gigantic uh, little blob thing. Uh, we need to, of course, position it exactly where we want it to be in the actual scene. So I'm going to all H unhide everything, select my little ocean thing. Let's make sure it's just sized correctly. So I'm going to scale that down, rotate it on the X 90 degrees again. And then let's just position that kind of like back here and let's just size that up to make sure it takes up the entire kind of back area here. And so now is where we can play around with a little bit of the settings. So uh, there are tons of settings in here and you can, of course, play around with them uh, according to what you are looking for in this scene. But I'm just going to set the uh, scale of the waves a little bit. up. I think that looks pretty cool. I don't want to do it too much because if I do it too much, you'll notice that we have a lot of uh, kind of geometry artifacting up here. And so I'm just going to scale that down just a little bit. You can, of course, also play around with the choppiness, uh, depending on how, you know, choppy you want it and everything. But this is looking pretty good for my scene. Uh, we don't have to worry that it's kind of, you know, coming out here. Uh, we do want to make sure that whatever we do is in front of this. Uh, or we can actually, we want to select this thing again. We want to uh, select this face, then G, Y, just move that back. Because we want all the kind of wine area um, to be, you know, this back plate right here. And so now what we can do, let's go uh, save the project. 
and then let's go ahead and go up to rendered and uh it's the default material right now so we need to change that let's go ahead and add a new material i'm going to name this one wine uh texture i just uh, differentiate it from the actual uh wine here and so now what we can do, uh, I'm just going to stay in here above you. You can, of course, go into the shader editor, but let's make this kind of a deep red color. Something like that. And then we need to tra change the transmission up and also the roughness way down. Something like that. Uh, let's actually play around with the color a little bit more. Maybe it needs to be a little bit lighter. So something like that you can see it matches pretty well i do want to go ahead and add some more lighting in our scene so i'm going to shift a add a light area light and let's bring that out here point that there and then i'm going to alt d duplicate that and what alt d does is it creates an instance so whatever uh, kind of changes of our light settings that we make it's going to apply to this one as well so we only need to apply the lighting kind of one time so let's go ahead and uh, increase the size a little bit. Uh, one thing I will note, uh, if you do kind of see some of the white glare of the light in here and you don't really like that, what you can do is uh, change the multiple importance off. And basically what that will do is it will still light whatever you have uh, it pointed to, but it actually won't show on, um, you know, your renders on reflective materials and stuff like that so just a little trick there um, but that's looking a little bit better i do want to increase the power maybe to like a 50 we'll see how that does maybe even to 100 something like that so now we can see i kind of like this like kind of white um light there uh, on the side it's just illuminating kind of the room a little bit better and then let's go ahead i want to play around with the kind of color in here uh the room color so i'm just going to change the roughness kind of down a little bit i want a little bit more reflection and then let's come down uh, the specular. I want to change down as well, uh, just because I don't want kind of those harsh highlights like we have in there. And so here is what we're getting so far. And so what I want to go ahead and do, I wonder if I go ahead and shift A, I want to add a, or let's get out of edit mode, shift A, add a light area, another area light. I want to put this behind my uh, wine kind of layer and let's rotate that on the X 90 degrees and then on the Z 180 just to flip that around so it's kind of facing uh, the way of the ad and so now with that I kind of want to create a backlight effect again you can see the light on the other side so we want to change multiple importance on and then let's just increase kind of that light we will have to play around with the wine color again um, but now it's kind of like a backlight effect let's increase the size a little bit and so now it's just kind of giving a kind of rim light right there, which I really like. And if we select this, we do need to make this a little bit darker, I believe. So something like that. Uh, you can, of course, play around with it for your scene, get something that you uh, like. But this is pretty good for uh, the scene that I'm uh, wanting to go for. So let's go ahead and uh, get to rendering. So um, now I'm not going to be doing my compositing inside a uh, blender because the blender compositing isn't really that great. I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, so what we're going to do is render inside a blender and then we're going to composite in Nuke. Now you can of course use DaVinci Resolve. You can use After Effects. You can use even Natron I believe is a free program. Uh, if you do want to follow along with us, the Nuke non-commercial is totally free for you to use and follow along. And so that's what I'm going to be using. Again, link to the that is down below so just download that um, of course you can uh, you know follow uh, the this tutorial inside of After Effects you'll just have to translate uh, between the programs uh, so let's go ahead and get a render out so I'm gonna come back to solid view you always want to be solid view when you're rendering since it'll take less uh, memory of your v VRAM and all this stuff let's go to compositing just hit use nodes up here we want to make sure our render layers is plugged into the composite so let's go ahead and render an image Okay, so here is our image. Let's exit out of here. And then if you have the Node Wrangler add-on, if you go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then just type in Node Wrangler, you want to have that checked. It comes default with Blender. And then what that allows us to do is shift Control, click a node, and we can add a viewer to it. And now we're viewing uh, the node. It's very noisy in here. And so, of course, we want to increase the sample count. I'm going to go with a 512 uh, for my scene since this is an Im image. Uh, I might actually increase that later for um, less noise in our scene to get some of these dots out. I do also want to de noise it myself because we're going to add some grain to it later and so it's always just a nice kind of rule of thumb to uh, denoise it so let's come over to the view layer properties i'm going to add a denoising data node and that's added all this extra data that blender automatically kind of renders out and combines it into the final image 
So Shift A at a denoise node. And the nice thing about this is it's not going to increase our render time uh, too much. It'll add a little bit of uh, render time for it to actually calculate, but it's just a nice way to kind of get a cleaner result. And uh, let's go ahead and save our project and render out another image just to show what I'm talking about. Okay, so there we go. You can see that uh, we have a lot of less noise in our scene and it's looking much nicer. Uh, let's come exit out of here. And then uh, what we can do, we do want to make sure our denoise is plugged into the composite because whatever is plugged into the composite is actually what's going to be rendered out. And so let's go over here. We actually don't need to render it out as a, a sequence or anything. Since it's just one image, we can actually render out just an image uh, and then save it like that. So let's come up here. I'm going to uh, just go to our previous render. You'll notice that we do have transparency and everything is looking good up here. Uh, you do kind of want to see this transparency. Let, let's come up to the image, go to save as, and uh, all these settings on the side, we want it to be PNG, RGBA, and then compression down to zero. You can, of course, uh, do your own settings if you want this to be higher res and you know more quality i would definitely uh, suggest opening xr since that's kind of the industry standard that at this point uh, but let's go ahead and save that so i'm just going to save this in a new location okay so once you have a name let's save as image and now we are actually ready to go ahead and start compositing so this is where you're going to go inside of your compositing program of choice uh, for me i'm going to be using nuke non-commercial since i believe that's uh, the best uh, kind of free compositing program if you're not using anything commercial so let's go ahead and open that up Okay, so now that we're inside of Nuke, you should see this default uh, kind of space. I'm not going to explain Nuke uh, too much if you are a beginner, but you should still be able to follow along. I'll try to explain myself as much as possible. Um, I like a different workspace, so what I'm going to do is come up to the workspace tab up here. Let's go to the large viewer. I just find this is kind of a better layout to see everything. Let's go ahead and uh, actually import in our footage and also the thing that we rendered out of Blender. So I'm going to hit R. That's to read in the file. You can also drag and drop it, but R is just kind of a nice way to do it inside of uh, or sorry Nuke. And so let's locate our footage. So I'm going to come up here. Uh, it's just that PNG that I rendered out. So open that up and then R again. And we're going to render uh, or drag in our wine and kind of CG layer. And so now you'll see that we have these two layers. What we want to do is like an alpha over inside of Blender. If you hit M on the keyboard, it'll add a merge node. The A socket is anything that's going to be on top of. Uh, so you can think uh, B is the background and then A is on top. And so if you just drag those two like that, uh, then if you hit one, uh, you can view the actual thing on the side. And so now we have this. You'll notice that we kind of have some jaggedness on the edge here. And that's actually because we don't have our alpha uh, kind of multiplied. And so if I select this and then come over here and hit A, you can see what channel we are at the top. And so we have this alpha channel that's not being applied to the actual kind of render yet. So that's why there's all this black out here. We actually don't have alpha yet. And so to do that, we're just going to pre-multiply our footage. So pre molt add that kind of in the line here. We want to make sure that's plugged into our merge. And so now we don't have those jagged lines anymore. Uh, what I want to go ahead and do is kind of color correct this to the actual environment. Now I will say I am uh, not a, you know, full nuke expert. And so, you know, figure out your own workflows and work works best with you and take whatever I say with the grain. So this is just kind of my workflow, but of course there are tons of workflows out there that might uh, better suit your needs. And so let's come over here. Uh, whatever we want to color correct, we want to do before the pre molt node, node, just so we have uh, kind of a clean alpha channel because we're not actually going to be affecting the alpha channel at all. It, it's a lot of complicated jargon, but basically all you got to know is any color you do, you want to do before you pre molt your footage. And so let's go G. I'm going to add a gray note and let's go ahead uh, D to disable that. What I want to go ahead and do is select the black and white values of our render. And so let's view that. And the black uh, is going to be the kind of darkest place in here. So if I actually play around with this Y slider at the top, that's the gamma. You'll notice that kind of this area right here looks to be our darkest. So I'm going to come here and just kind of select that. If you hold uh, Control Shift and then kind of click and drag, that'll select that box. And so now that we've selected our black, we need to do the same thing for the white. So let's just click that button. And then the white is pretty self-explanatory. Let's just make sure we're getting kind of the darkest, or sorry, the lightest spot, which seems to be over here. So let's uh, control click, uh, disable that up here. It's very important that you disable your gain because whatever pixel data we're actually selecting over here is affected by our pixel. So if we actually select it now, it's going to be gray. And so you just want to, again, control click that up there to set it back to the default. 
value, excuse me. Um, but now we can do the same thing, control shift, click and drag and select this kind of white area over here. And so now that's hopefully uh, kind of color match it a little bit better to our scene. If we come back out here, yeah, that's pretty good. Now we also need to select the lift and the gain. And so that's going to be of our actual footage. And so let's again disable the gain, or sorry, the grade node. Uh, and then we need to do basically the same exact thing but for our foot footage now. And so let's select the white values. I'll notice is that clipping we don't want any kind of clipping area so you'll notice that my ga uh, my gamma up here is all the way to zero we don't any want any of those areas that clip so i notice right here this pixel doesn't really clip so i'm going to select that to be my white values right there and then same thing for the blacks uh we'll notice like it doesn't have to be exact but i want it to be closer to the object uh than others so let's see so maybe We'll just pick select some of this up here. Uh, so there we go. So now we have our, uh, you know, black and white values uh, solved for each of the different layers. So now we can disable or re-enable the gray node. And now you'll, you'll see that that blends in a lot better. It's basically set our black point and our white point for the actual render. Uh, now let's go ahead and correct the gamma. And so I'm going to go to R uh, over here. That's the red channel. And let's uh, select this color wheel to get the game out. I'm just going to play around with these sliders until it looks about right. It looked uh, pretty good for the actual scene. I'm just going to play around with it a little, little bit more to kind of correct the uh, correct it as much as possible, and um, you know get a result that is very convincing that it would actually be there in the real life. And so you can see right around there. Uh, is looking pretty good and now you can see if i turn this off and on with d you'll notice that um you know we have all this blue sky and everything and since we color corrected that you're seeing some of the blue spill that would actually be there uh you know kind of go on to the footage and so that's really nice uh to have okay so the next thing that we need to do is actually match the grain of the thing so if i go into the blue channel over here by hitting b and then we'll turn the game uh the gamma kind of down a little bit just so you can see you can see how grainy uh it is kind of in the sky area and you'll notice how clean it is and again that's because we denoise the actual uh cg pass and so uh that's going to be really nice uh to have but of course we do need to try to match that as closely as possible there are two kind of workflows that um um, you can decide between uh, we can either add um, you know noise to the actual CG itself and try to match it to the actual plate that's totally viable or we can also try to denoise the original footage and then just add noise back uh, in itself and all, all this stuff uh, what I'm actually going to do is the latter option where we actually denoise the original plate and then add noise to both of them at the end uh, I just find that works better for this scene uh, since it's a PNG instead of a video clip and so let's go ahead and I'm going to uh, go over here, hit tab, go to denoise. We're just going to add that over there. And I, I want to place that on the source of uh, our kind of read over here. And let's make sure we uh, double click that. And then we want to select a location where uh, we can analyze the noise. And since our sky up here is giving us, you know, if we go back uh, to here and then the blue channel, you'll notice that the sky gives us the most amount of noise. You kind of want a solid kind of, you know, view. Um, so over here, there's a lot of detail in the windows and stuff that it might construe as noise and all this stuff. So you just kind of want a solid area. This uh, is perfectly fine for what we're uh, going to use this for. And so now... Let's go to the blue channel again. Let's just darken the gain. Usually uh, you have to increase the gain, but since this is so bright, um, you know, it's easier to see with it lower. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's see what it's doing so far. You can see if I disable that it's, uh, you know, removing a ton of the noise. You can, of course, if you want it to denoise it more, you can, of course, uh, change the denoise amount up uh, a lot. Uh, that might introduce a little bit of artifacting and stuff. So I'm actually going to uh, decrease that a little bit and play around with these settings. You know, the, the default settings are kind of what I find uh, works fine for this scene. And, uh, you know, I don't know the total correct way uh, to denoise there. I, I think, uh, you know, industry people even take it into its own program to denoise the foot footage beforehand. And so now let's just be uh, then, you know, control click, get us back there. So now that we have everything denoised, it's matching up uh, much closer now. It might be hard to tell on inside of YouTube, but on my screen, you can tell that it's much uh, closer matching now. Of course, every footage that you've ever seen in, uh, you know, movies and all this stuff has grain. So we do need to add grain back. So let's add a grain node. Just going to plug that inside of here. And then let's play around with the intensity just until we get something that looks pretty good. 
uh, intensity is pretty low um, for the most part for modern day cameras. And then we need to change the blue down a little bit too. So now you can see that we have a little bit of noise here. And if you actually want to render this out as kind of like a um, MOV um, and you can play it and see the noise, you know, moving and everything. And so that's doing a pretty good job. Um, of course, this is where you can kind of be a little bit creative if you want a kind of noisier look, um, like kind of more of like an old school camera type. Um, then you can totally play around with this. I'm just going to leave around these values. Uh, you can, of course, play around with the size and everything like that. But this is kind of what I'm going to leave it as. Um, let's go ahead and uh, do some more creative aspects of this shot now. Now that everything's kind of, you know, normalized and, uh, you know, graded and everything is looking correct let's go ahead and play around with it a little bit i do kind of want to see what a glow node would look like so i'm going to add glow you can think of glow as kind of like bloom of a camera um, there's a node uh, called glare inside of blender and this you know mimics that uh, pretty well uh, so i'm going to go add uh let's change the tolerance up and i don't want it too too much because uh, i'm trying to match it to uh, some of the glow in the actual shot you'll notice up here there's just a slight little glow um, and kind of you know edge right there and so i just kind of like adding a super subtle effect and so i'm going to change the size way down something like that and then the brightness we also need to change down and so you can see that that's just adding a little bit of effect so let's actually change it down a little bit more and so yeah so now you can see that's just changing it around just a little bit but enough uh, where it's actually noticeable um you know if you and it'd be weird if you didn't see it and so uh you can of course play around more with this shot um you can render this out and take it in DaVinci. I'm not going to be doing that. Um, uh, uh, there's a whole nother workflow that you can do for color. If you do want to do some slight color mods uh, inside of uh, Nuke, what you can do is I like um, to, let's go ahead and add a C, uh, hit C to color correct. That's where you can have your saturation and contrast, you know, play around with those a little bit. And then if you want to get a little bit more fancy with it, you can also do a lens uh, distortion node. So if you hit tab, go lens, add lens distortion. This is, uh, you know, a very creative effect. But one I always kind of like is adding that on here. And then uh, we'll change the uh, denominator up just, or sorry, down ever so slightly just to kind of mimic uh, what an actual lens uh, would do. Very important to note is that we actually want to do this before our grain, because if you think about a camera, the grain is always, you know, applied at the very last step. And so whatever you do, you always want to make sure that your grain is kind of unaffected by any distortion or, you know, any chromatic aberration that you do. Um, and so you just always want to make sure you do that. And so now let's kind of select everything that we've done and, you know, see the before and after. So I'm going to select all my nodes down here. And so now if I hit D, this is what we had rendered out of Blender. And this is kind of the result that we would have had if we composited inside of Blender. Um, and now with Nuke compositing, we have this, which is much more pleasing to the eye, matches the environment much more. And so that's just a cool little work uh, workaround. Now, one thing to know is I'm not going to kind of defocus um, this right here. I noticed that the focus is very sharp in this. Uh, it pr was probably shot at like a 16 f-stop uh, plus. Um, but if for any reason... Um, w another scene that you're doing has a lot of depth of field. Uh, you can try to mimic that as closely inside of Blender as possible. That's what I would re recommend. And then inside of Nuke, if you just want to add a defocus node, and, and you can place that kind of right at the end, right before you merge it into the chain, uh, that's a really good node. And you can like zoom really close in and try to match it, uh, match the kind of defocus details as much as possible. Like I said, uh, it was totally fine before, but that's just kind of the workflow there. And some Something that you do to a lot of other shots and so now finally let's uh you know select this in, uh the end of this we do want to make sure that we are rendering uh our project is you know the right settings this is actually something i probably should have done at the start but again since it's just an image you know it didn't matter too too much and so let's come up here let's hit s over here if we hit s uh, we'll go ahead and set the full size format to the 1080p uh, kind of ratio. You'll notice that over here, if we kind of, you know, view our videos, it'll say kind of what the resolution is of the uh, kind of plates and stuff like that. Since both were 1080p, we're just going to set that to 1080p. Um, if you're rendering out a, a movie clip, then, you know, set the FPS here. 
um, and check the, the original uh, movies uh, FPS to try to match it as closely as possible. And then uh, to actually go ahead and render this out, I'm going to render it out as just a uh, kind of PNG since, you know, uh, I didn't want to have to deal with motion tracking and stuff for this tutorial. I'm going to plug uh, the right into here. All I did to do that was hit W on my keyboard um, to add a right node. And right is basically just the exporting node um, inside Blender. Think of like um, rendering an animation. That's basically a node kind of dedicated to that. And so let's double click inside of here. Let's add a new file location. Okay, so type the name that you want, and I'm, I'm going to save this as a PNG. Very important and kind of a confusing step is inside of um, Nuke, it actually uses Unix, uh, which is kind of a coding language uh, developed around, uh, you know, naming conventions and all that stuff. So uh, what we actually need to do is we need to type in period, and so that's going to end our kind of string of our name until the program that we're done naming our file. Then we're going to do hashtags. This is kind of how many frame, uh, the frame number that we want. And so basically... Since we're rendering on frame one, it's going to be 0001. And so name that however many hashtags you want. I'm just, I, uh, four is usually just what I stick with, uh, just, you know, because I'm rendering larger scenes usually. And then put dot and then PNG or EXR or whatever you want to render it out in. I'm just going to do PNG for mine. We're going to hit save and you can see it's automatically updating some of the settings here. Um, very important is that we're not rendering out the alpha channel because we don't want that because again, if we kind of select down here and hit A, we have the alpha of our actual kind of billboard again. And if we were to render out the alpha, it might only render out this area. And so we don't want that since we're rendering this out uh, one final time, we, we don't want any alpha up here. So just leave this as none. And then what we can do is render, it'll set it to the input. And since our input is an image, it'll just do one to one and we can do okay. And it's gonna render out the final image. Okay, so here is the final result that we got from this tutorial. Hopefully you guys got something similar and played around with it and understand the workflow of how I do advertising inside of Blender to Nuke. I'd love to see if you guys make anything cool. So if you make anything, definitely tag me and I'd love to check it out. Anyways, I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe, if you like this tutorial, and I will see you in the next.